What's up, comic and pop culture fans? I just picked up a collection, and I'm going to start with the slabs and go on to show you the rawls. We're not going to waste any time today. Let's get into it. I spent $4,000, and I actually have to do a couple services for him for free. So let's call it $4,500. We've got a 9-0, pretty impressive grade, of Iron Man number 8. We got a Superman 51. Unfortunately, page 15 is missing. It does not affect the story. I believe it was just an ad or whatever. But regardless, qualified Superman 1948. We got ASM Annual number 9, which adapts the story from Spectacular Spider-Man Magazine number 2. Awesome cover. We did get an ASM number 362 in here. This one was a personal favorite of mine. Wonder Woman from 1973 getting a 9.6 white pages. Thought that was a really good grade. How about a Detective Comics 880 signed by Jock and Scott Snyder. This is the foil virgin cover. Uh, then we got a PGX Amazing Spider-Man number 72. I think it's like the second or third appearance of the Shocker. Tomb of Dracula 16 in a 9.0. This was pretty cool. We got a 15 cent Avengers number 82 in a 9.4. Very impressive grade on that. I got a Tomb of Dracula number 11, which reached the 9.2. Strange Tales issue 162. Look at this, Metal Men number one. Wow, you don't see that too often. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number 13, gorgeous cover. And we got some nice 1956 Wonder Woman 86 5.5. Fun fact, none of these have ever been cleaned or pressed. Out of the slabs, I'm betting this is my favorite. This is Showcase number 6, which is the first appearance of the Challengers of the Unknown. That's a nice one, even despite it being only a 2.0. And here's the last of the slabs before I move on to showing you the Raws. It's a Thor 167 from 1969, getting a 9.4 with white pages. Never cleaned, never pressed. Not bad. And make sure you stay to the end of the video where you really see how that $4,000 plus dollars was, I believe, justified. We got a West Avengers key right here. Very nice. We do have a Star Wars number eight. Is that the first Jackson? It might be. We have an X-Men 105. Yes, these do need to get into new bags and boards pretty badly. We have a Batman 214. Unfortunately, it is coverless. We have an FF first appearance of Terax. Pretty sure that that's what that is. Random ASM. Submariner 27. ASM 291 newsstand, gorgeous copy. I'm gonna pull from this pile a little bit of newsstand 376. Uh, Batman annual number, I literally can't tell. I have no idea which annual that is. Anniversary uh, Thor cover. Marvel team up, two of these Bagley Spider-Mans, nice condition. X-Men 152, ASM 356, one of these uh, Professor Hulks. Oop, big boy right here. Classic cover Batman right there. Suddenly we got out of the $3 book range and into the like $100 book range. You're going to see that happen a lot with this stack. This stack is so random. There's no method to the madness. You're going to see $3 books, some $1 books, some $10 books, and suddenly, boom, I'm going to hit you with like a $300 book. That's just how this collection kind of worked. We have a giant size Avengers number one. Very nice. Avengers number 178, clean looking copy. I'm gonna pull from this pile. Man Called Nova number three. First appearance of Diamond Head, maybe. Uh, one, two, let's see, one, two, three of these Marvel team up, which is Spider-Man and Human Torch. We've got Tales to Astonish number 81. Pulling from this side, we've got Batman 441, 
Um, this guy had very, very sharp lowest lane. I actually bought his lowest lane before. It's a little bit of a bestseller of mine. They do really well. Monster of Frankenstein. I always love seeing this because you don't really see that too much. Defenders, number 14. Incredible, incredible cover right there. All right, then we got Batman 259. Detective Comics 275. And actually, that's not bad condition. The worst part about it is this situation at the bottom left. Um, otherwise, it's still very readable. Thought that was a, a good grab. Then we got the uh, Transformers number three, which is one of the earliest Spider-Man black suit appearances, actually. Werewolf by Night 41. Extremely hard to find in this run by that point. Action Comics 595 for Silver Banshee. From this side, we have Adventure into Fear number 18. Very nice. Fury of Firestorm number 35. House of Secrets. Some 12 cent Captain Marvel. Just really like the cover on that. Uh, there's two of these. You'll see another one in here. This is uh, Batman 176. It's an 80 page giant. On this side of things, we have the second appearance of Catwoman in the Silver Age, which also was a Lois Lane book. We've got this chameleon classic right here. Uh, Detective 372, very nice. We have a Joker number one. Told you that's how this collection works. Randomly, just a big book. We've got Fantastic Four newsstand of 292, the Hitler cover, little value there. First appearance of Eve Dormus, a love interest of Hal Jordan. Nice condition, actually, on this Silver Age. Randomly nice condition. Uh, the lowest lanes are all super sharp. Um, just really happy to pick those up from him. On this side, we've got pit number one, Star Trek, the motion picture, number one, another 12 cent Batman. This one's issue 161. Detective 532, just another classic Joker cover. Chamber of Chills, 19. And we're going to move on to this side. We got ASM 112. Absolutely awesome cover right there. Bronze Age goodness. Tower of Shadows. Number nine. We do have a 12 cent Aquaman. This one's issue 15. I believe that is a Nick Cardi. We've got the classic X-Men. I think that's Jim Lee. I don't know why I said I think. I know it's Jim Lee. 268. Gorgeous condition. Another key here. Adventure Comics this time. Not the best shape, but still, it's a solid key. First appearance of Stormbreaker. And let's move on back to this side. we got Chamber of Darkness. Strange Tales 187, which has incredible, impeccable covers. Just a little bit of a classic cover, newsstand. We do have a Howard 12. Very nice. I think that's the Kiss tie-in right there. We have another Nick Cardi. It's Teen Titans number 29 right here. Giant size werewolf number two. And that is gorgeous, actually. That might stay in the personal collection. Anything werewolf by night related, I get really excited about. We have monsters, where monsters dwell, number 26. Another one of those really sharp lowest lanes. Again, stay tuned to the end of the video where I'm gonna be showing you the a pile of like 20 books that I thought were like the best, but this stack has really good stuff in here, too. Tomb of Dracula 11, you just saw a 9.2 of that. This is the classic uh, Breaking the Fourth Wall, where he calls out Jim Aparo, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Not the best condition, though. Uh, we've got some TMNT over here. Very nice. We have a newsstand, Deathlock number one. More very high-grade Lois Lane. I think there's some small key significance there. The lowest lanes, again, were really nice. Ooh, here's a book I never find. Modred the Mystic, number one. Detective Comics, just a classic Joker cover right here. Nice value there. This is the brand new um, $3.99 priced FF reprint. Sure, why not? Uh, the first full appearance of Bishop, gorgeous copy. 
We have some 10 cent Superboy that I was really digging the condition on. It's number 69. Then we have issue 132. It's a 12 center Superboy. Let's move back to this side. We've got Lois Lane number 85. Cover always reminds me of uh, Guy Gardner, <laughs> first appearance. We got a Jimmy Olsen uh, 10 center. It's actually number 12. Um, getting pretty early on that one. Pretty crazy. Love this, man. Giant size Spider Man and Dracula. If that isn't Bronze Age goodness, I don't know what is, man. That is. Woo! That's a James book right there. ASM 115. Another one of these new Z 291s. Star Wars number four, but it is the reprint noted by the lack of UPC and by the diamond shape up there. So watch out for that. Still some value. First appearance of, I think, the swashbuckler. And let's move to this side. We got first intelligent Hulk, I believe. A couple other things going on in there. We have a Thor, or excuse me, Journey into Mystery 112. Nice and early Hulk versus Thor. That's got some value there. Watch out for that. Then I have to do a full inspection on the next two books. Signed by Doug Mensch. If they are 9.8 candidates, I'm going to send them to CBCS. Same one with this one. Iron Man number five. Not bad condition, except for that rip on the side. Here's a really big book. Unfortunately, this one's got its spine ticks. This is the second appearance of Black Adam. This is a big deal. Strange Tales, issue number 119. Nice and early there. On this side, we have West Coast Avengers number 44. Avengers 121. More 12 cent Superman. Very nice. We do have uh, the first Bloodstone. Not bad. Um, I grabbed this because it was the DC Universe variant. Watch out for those DC Universe variants. They can go for like 20 bucks. Sometimes 50 if they're a key. Uh, we got Brave and the Bold, number 90. I grabbed this solely because of the absolute ridiculous awesome cover i just love that art so much my friends love it shadow number one over here battlestar galactica number one we did get an ff 54 very nice detective comics number 300 polka dot man amazing spider-man 288 newsy Web of Spider-Man 13, just a little bit of a classic cover. And let's show you the pile that I think is the goods. Once I'm all done with this pile, I'm going to show you two Golden Age books that I think make this purchase right here. We do have a Star Wars number one. It's got its spine ticks, though, but it is a Star Wars number one. Detective Comics 330. Nice little key right there. Uh, and actually, the condition of that's pretty good, except for the spine tips on ticks on batman's cape that's a nice one here's a book i this has eluded me forever i now finally have it it's a detective 400 the first appearance of man bat Woo! nice value there that's a hard one to get my friends i did get a uh, first appearance of nightwing and what's interesting is this gentleman actually paid three dollars for that um that's a good price. I do have a Ms. Marvel one, and these are like in the nines. They're incredibly sharp. I have a second one in here somewhere. Batman 189. Um, I've been picking that book up when I can. That's a nice key. Not best can not the best condition here, but it's a FF39 classic Doom cover right there. This one's pretty beat, though. We're looking at like a 1.8 copy right here uh this is one that i love this is a james book through and through uh justice league of america 30 this is 
versus all the counterparts there you got owl man you got what's that ultra man i kind of forget um just awesome i love the whole earth 2 stuff you know so i really dig that uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 29. I actually almost bought this from this guy the last time I went to visit his collection. And uh, it wasn't for sale. Now this time it is. So ASM 29. Very nice. Now here randomly is a very sharp. I would say like a 9.2, 9.4 of the first appearance of Madam Web. So I'm really happy to grab that one. It's also a really good time to have grabbed that one. Here's another one of those Ms. Marvel number ones I told you about. We have A Journey into Mystery 124. This is sharp, my friends. This is sharp. Really nice condition on this. I'm really excited about it. Might actually get that one graded. Then we got the Neil Adams goodness. 233. Superman 233. Considered a classic cover. Some people think this one's as good as Bats 251. I'm a Bats 251 guy, but hey, that is pretty iconic right there. Let's show you the two best books in the pile. If you were thinking that the $4,000 plus that I spent on this collection might have been a little off, let's ease your mind here. We've got some nice Superman number 28. And it's actually in decent condition with a clean and a press, I do believe we could potentially see this bump to something like a six, maybe even a 6.5. The worst thing is that bottom corner right there where it says Atlas. There's not only dirt, but there's a disturbance in the force. I had to say that. Uh, next book is really, really gonna make or break this. Uh, it is Detective Comics number 73. The first and only Scarecrow cover in the Golden Age. This, unfortunately, is a little out of whack. It has one of the craziest spine rolls I've ever seen, so it needs to be realigned. That sticker is, unfortunately, on the actual cover right there, and um, the cover is detached. So uh, we're looking at probably like a you know, 1.5, 1.8, um, the value on this book is insane, though, and I have to say, I was chatting with some of my friends in the community, and they said that if there ever was a good restoration candidate, this one might be the one. It's still got all the pieces to it. It, it actually still has all its colors perfectly. The colors are still there. Um, and it, it's got the wrap. It's got everything. It's all there. It's just detached needs to be realigned that sticker needs to go uh, and a couple things need to be dolled up a little bit just to kind of bring this all together so i might for the first time ever do an actual restoration on this book i'm actually very much a stock original type of guy i've never even considered doing a restoration before i'm thinking about it for this one I'd love to see this brought to new life. There are not many out there. Um, this one is absolutely gorgeous. So, Detective Comics 73, baby. First cover and only cover appearance of Scarecrow in the Golden Age. That's a winner. And that's a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. These will be arriving at a claim sale near you. Some of this stuff I gotta keep. I think you can understand. But the rest, I'll see you then. Keep on hunting. Make sure to come down to Sentiment Depot Antiques and Collectibles where I'm set up with all of my comics located at 238 West Delaware Ave, Pennington, New Jersey. Open every day except for Monday and Tuesday. Enjoy 10% off from Wednesday to Friday. See you there.